Mike, uh, with all the injuries this year, how much do you take that into account in assessing the offensive performance and Todd Downing as coordinator? Well, I mean, I think you take into everything when you evaluate, um, you know, all levels of the organization. You know, there, there were things, you know, I think the consistency, you know, is, is really the biggest thing, you know, that stood out when you, when you look at that particular um, unit and, and our units in general. I mean, there were conversations that we had earlier in the season, you know, about our special teams being just one play away from being a dominating performance in the game where we played really well and, you know, punted and covered and tackled them inside of 20 and had punt returns and kickoff returns and then, you know, as, as attrition happened and, you know, had some guys down and moving parts and bringing people in from other places, you know, that happened offensively, that happened defensively and happened on special teams. So, you know, I think you look at it and you evaluate everything that you're doing and, you know, who you're doing it with and, 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 and the staff that you, you put in place for the players. Mike, in terms of just where this organization is, mm -hmm. in your mind, are you better off with a minor changes and better luck or major changes? Well, I mean, I think change is obviously a part of this league. It's part of, you know, professional sports. Um, you know, I think that we'll, you know, there'll be conversations, you know, here in the short term about, you know, the general manager and, and where that goes. And then uh, that person and I will have conversations. We'll have conversations with Amy you know, about the, the extent of the change that we have. You know, I don't think that that's something that is going to happen, you know, necessarily overnight, but there's going to be, you know, change. How about within the coaching staff? I know, like, you preach loyalty. Mm -hmm. That's one of your, your found foundations. Mm -hmm. How do you weigh that against the performance well, that, that... Yeah, and I don't think that, you know, lo loyalty um, clearly is a two-way street, and so is trust and all that other stuff. Um, and I think the one thing that going back to where you drew that from was things that I, that I look for or that I certainly want to make sure is at the forefront is that can you, you know, trust this person right outside of here and can you trust them that you know, the messages that you're portraying to the team uh, are getting relayed and that um, they're, they're allowing for to put your message into their own words and that they're not out there looking for another job or they're not giving the players mixed messages. I think that's the loyalty, you know, that, um, that I'm looking for. The, the loyalty that I have is obviously just to do, um, you know, put people in place that, that are, you know, right for the football team. And so uh, I'll look at each and every phase of our, our team as it relates to the coaching staff, as it relates to the players and, you know, that process has is, is obviously started, just finished up meeting with the players and, you know, thank them. You know, and then, you know, I'll have conversations with the coaches, you know, throughout this week and, and next week. What's this day like for you, Mike, as a head coach? What, what, did you, what was your final message to them? Well, the final message was that, I, you know, thank them. I thank the guys that uh, started this process on April 18th. They had been through a lot. I thanked them uh, for their dedication. You know, other than a few games, you know, that I felt like, you know, maybe we were out, outmanned. I felt like, you know, we competed. Unfortunately, we were five and six in one score games. You know, that's something that had been a strength of ours um, in the past, and, and it wasn't. Um, you know, I, I asked them to stay in communication with, I don't want this to be a, a seasonal type of deal. I don't want it to be transactional, you know, try to build a connection with them, try to make relationships with them. You care about their family, you care about their, their children and things that they're doing. So I've asked them to communicate and stay in communication. Um, you know, I'd hope that they had learned some lessons along the way outside of football and, um, you know, told them to thank everybody here that, that helped them uh, do their job this year. You know, our offensive coordinator and Todd, that'll be part of the conversations and it'll be part of my evaluation, um, you know, this week as, as it relates to the football team. Any changes been made yet, Mike, on the coaching staff? No, nope. uh, no, not yet. Just still, again, working through conversations with the players and having some meetings and 
you know, I'll meet with the coaches and, you know, continue that process. When you look at offense in, in particular, Mike and, and Todd's two years, numbers have gone down. Obviously, a lot of factors go into that with injuries and so forth. But, you know, I, I guess what in your mind has he done best over the past couple of years? Well, I mean, I think that there's a, you know, there's a consistency. I think we've, you know, built the built the offense around Derek. We've, you know, had a lot of success in in that regard. Um, you know, we we have to protect our quarterback better. You know, when when you don't protect your quarterback, they get hurt or they turn the ball over. Uh, so we have to we have to do that. You know, we have to take care of the football. You know, we gave it to 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 our best player, and you know, he just he turned it over this year, and uh, he hadn't in the past, and so. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, performance, and you know, we'll look at everything. Why is it important to bring back a guy like Jeffrey Simmons? Well, Jeff's under contract, yeah. I think. So. But just in future, with the negotiations, just what does he bring to this team? Oh man, leadership, um, toughness, accountability, you know, performance. You know, I, you know, just. Just every day coming to work with a great attitude. You know, he plays through a lot of pain and dis discomfort. You know, he played, you know, th through a lot of things in his in his career here. So those are things that I, I value and appreciate in a player. Are you optimistic that Ryan will be your starting quarterback next year? Well, I mean, we have a lot of guys here that are under contract. We have a lot of guys that that uh, you know want Ryan to get as healthy as he possibly can, and then you know go and be our quarterback and you know figure out things that are gonna. You know, help us win, and then you know, that that's that's the case for a lot of guys. A lot of guys are you know that are under contract that finish the season, um, not out there. You know, so let's get everybody healthy and let's see where everybody's at, and then you know we can make some decisions. So you don't feel comfortable right now committing to Ryan as the starter for next year? Well, I mean, he's our starting quarterback. If he was healthy, he's our starting quarterback. You know what I mean? So that's that's all I can tell you. And right now. There's a lot of guys that aren't healthy and that didn't finish the game. I mean, I think we're going to talk a lot, a lot of hypotheticals um, uh, two days after our last game. So, you know, happy to talk a lot about things that I can answer, but I can't answer things that, you know, are in the future. What has Amy told you about how the kind of search now, now that we're out of the season, how the search will play out for the GM and what your role will be? Well, I, you know, comfortable you know, with those conversations about, you know, being involved, I think that they're excited about the group that they're going to bring in and uh, and meet with. And I think that, you know, once they kind of get through that first process, you know, be, be involved in, you know, whatever would come after that in, in, in probably a, a smaller group, um, excited about that process and, and being involved and, you know, helping in any way that I can. She asked for your input on anyone that you may already know that you would have a preference for? Um. Yeah, I mean, we've had conversations about it. So I would just say that th th those were good conversations, you know, open conversations. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, they, it's not like they've, Amy's kept me in, in the dark about the process and how that's going. Well, yeah, that's a lot of players talk about the uncertainty, you know, with the fact that there is no GM at this time. Did you discuss that at all with your players and how they approach this offseason? whether they're under contract or not. I, I mean, as a player, I, there was always uncertainty, you know. So as a coach, you know what I mean? There's uncertainty in this business. It's whether there's a GM, there's an interim GM, whether there's no GM, there's uncertainty. Um, that wouldn't change if we hired a GM tomorrow. You know, we have to address it. We have to at least look at it, and we are, and we have, and we do it every every single day. You know, that I meet with Todd, that we meet with Frank, that we're trying to figure out what these injuries are, Gentry, and I know that everybody, you know, has got the answers. I don't know if I have the answers on, you know, the 90% of the injuries occurred in the game, right? Um, of an ACL or an MCL or a high ankle sprain. I mean, those are hard, you know. We look at soft tissue injuries. We look at those soft tissue injuries of, uh, you know, repeat offenders. You know, I mean, it doesn't take too hard to look and see that, you know, 
Christian Fulton and, and David Long are, you know, I mean, they repeat offenders as soft tissue injuries. They have to figure out a way to, to train and act like, you know, this, this is the game is played at a, at a high speed. Kevin Byard hadn't pulled a hamstring in, since we've been here. You know what I mean? And there's, there's a durability factor to playing professional football that we should not overlook. Like, that, that, that's real. There's, there's guys that are durable and there's guys that aren't. And we're going to try, you know, I mean, you're going to keep asking me about these questions or these injuries, and I'm going to try to do my best to answer them. Um, how we practice, you know, how we practice in preseason and that the data that we're getting about the regeneration days. Now, do you want to be a blister or you want to be a callus? And, you know, do you want to keep working through every day and you get your volume up so that you can withstand the, the, the volume and the rigors of the season? You know, and that would be callous. Or do you want to be a blister and you want to, you know, feel some discomfort, pull back, wait till you feel good, and then come back and do it for in a couple of days, and then you're going to, you know, keep feeling that way. So those are the two thoughts. You know, we, we've tried to get them to maximum speed, or excuse me, 90%. We've talked about that throughout the week so that it's not Sunday to Sunday proposition that all of a sudden, you know, they've got to go and, and sprint. Uh, and get up to 90, 95%, and they haven't been there since the previous week. Um, and there is a level of luck that I think. I think there's a level, you know, it's cyclical. I mean, we've had two, you know, awful years as it relates to injuries. Um, you know, prior to that, you know, I think it was at a level where you could, you know, say that it was in, in, in the range of, of normal. So. It's not. I mean, maybe the training camp, you know, I think other than the training camp, you know, we've added the, the regen days. We've added um, some of that time off. If anything, you know, I mean, we've, you know, we've added that into the schedule of training camp, you know, just trying to look at, you know, the length of it, you know, when you're not playing games and, you know, there's some days where you have to look, and some guys that aren't playing in games, you with the day off, the day before, you know, you're trying to manufacture work for them. So we're always trying to be creative and make sure that everybody has a plan um, to stay as healthy as possible, and then obviously the return to play. You know, I, I, you know, I love what we do with our training staff, our rehab staff, you know, the strength and conditioning that has knowledge within the football. You know, Brian Bell. Um, puts a lot of time in with the coaches so that he knows what drills to do as these guys are returning to play and then ultimately trying to get them back onto the field. Is there enough, so enough emphasis, Mike, on, on durability and the acquisition process? I, I, the well, you know what I mean? We've, we've certainly um, brought some guys in or have had some guys that have had some injury history. Um, you know, and if that's, you know, I don't know if that's always a predictor of the, the future. In some cases, it maybe was, and in some cases, it wasn't. As you turn the page to free agency and, and draft that evaluation process with this new GM coming, how much involvement would you like to have in bringing guys in that, that match what, what you want to do? Well, I think that that's the whole idea. You know, I'm comfortable that um, you know throughout this process of you know communication and finding the right person, you know, the collaboration. Obviously, is critical. You know, feel like we've, you know, put some time in here over the course of five years. It hasn't been perfect, but you know, we certainly have an idea of the the type of people. And I think you start with the person. You start with the person, and then you you make sure that you know the the talent and the skill set fits. But it, I think it's about people and, and and who they are, the type of leaders they are, the type of teammates they are. I think you start there because you just. You learned anything. You learned that this is a this is a tough gig. It's a long gig, and, and the front runners may be good when things are going well, but but when you have some hiccups and you have some you know adversity, you, know, you really need you really need some dudes that uh, you know are going to stick there and, and, and kind of do it each and every day. Would you would like that collaboration to remain as it was with the previous GM, or are you looking for that to increase? Well, I'm just looking to try to bring in the best people and the best players that we possibly can. Again, just going forward, just trying to find the best GM right now. That's the next step, you know, trying to um, 
you know, work through the staff, work through the players, work through meetings. Um, and then when they ask me to be involved, I, I'm, I'm comfortable and excited to, to be involved in the process, not about where we were or what we did. At the quarterback position, did, did Josh Dobb give you something to maybe think about as far well, as bringing him back and, and, and to kind of piggyback on that? What's the message to Malik moving forward? Well, I think I'll start with, with the message to Malik moving forward. I mean, the message is continue to improve, continue to develop, um, continue to you know, work on those things that we've continued to, to, to discuss, you know, whether it be with you know, um, being able to, to, to progress through, uh, being able to recognize you know, rotation, coverages, you know, just the overall knowledge of, of what he's doing each and every day, which is what he did uh, on the you know, show team most of the, the year. Um, you know, come back with a, with, a, with a great attitude, with, with knowledge of what we're doing offensively, um, being in shape. Uh, you know, and that's I told all the young guys you know, that this, this isn't a six-month job, you know, if they don't, they don't work harder between their uh, the next four months than they did to get here. There's a whole new crop of players that are waiting to to come into that spot. That's the nature of this business, and that's not that's not a threat to anybody. That's that's just what it is. You know, you look at the development of Tier Tart over his first, second, third year. You know, I mean, or you know, whereas said Jaden Peavy, if you don't do anything, you don't work any harder than you know, we just got another Peavy. That, that'll just come through the pipeline and just explain it to them. Uh, as far as Josh, I think, you know, certainly you'd have to have a conversation. I enjoyed having him here. I think he made an impact in a short amount of time. Um, you know, we'll have those conversations and, you know, see where we end up. The one thing about this team is there was never any finger pointing, it seemed mm -mm. like, from the guys in the locker room. That's hard to do when you go on a seven game skid. How, how was that able, I guess, to, to be able to keep that culture? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's what you've talked about. What I've tried to talk about is it's not when you're winning, you know, the culture. The, the culture is about, you know, maybe when things aren't going so well. And guys continue to prepare, continue to show up, you know, get on a plane, go to Jacksonville with every intent to win that football game. And, you know, for most of that game, you know, I thought we did everything that we could. You know, it came up short there in the end. But, uh, you know, it all comes down to, you know, trying to be consistent and in, in starting with my message uh, to the team, uh, the people that we put around them, you know, the coaches and the trainers and, you know, our support staff, and then obviously the players. It's their responsibility, and, you know, they, they, they did that. They stuck together and tried to, tried to find ways to prepare and try to find ways to win. Mike, as you go about... This organization would go the path of rebuilding from the bottom up as opposed to running it back with the group that you guys have had over the last couple of years with the changes? Well, I mean, I think that there's a, a, a number of things that you could do. It's, you know, I mean, we could, you know, there's a lot of, that's those questions that you ask every year, you know, as you construct a roster, as you, you know, do a lot of different things. And our goals will never change. Our goal is to, to have a championship football team. I um, have fallen short, you know, of that. Um, but we still know what wins. We still know, uh, and we're going to win. You know. But again, there's the decisions that that will be made uh, throughout the season, throughout the off season. Excuse me. And you know, starting with, you know, free agency guys that we identify. You know, trying to get get somebody hired and looking at where we are with the salary cap and and all those things that everybody's concerned about. Mike, as you go about evaluating your your coaching staff and your players and looking at what needs to change, how do you go about evaluating yourself um, as you kind of ref reflect on what kind of what's been your, your first losing season? How do you kind of internally look at the, the job you've done? Um, you know, I mean, I think when you, when you work, you know, the ability to play uh, with 23 guys on a practice squad or from the street out of 48, um, you know, you, you look at, you know, how competitive you are, you know, didn't do a good enough job. We lost too many games. Um, you know, I, I think that those things will come. I think those that self-reflection, you know, I mean, I, 
nobody would evaluate that they did a good enough job because we didn't win. Um, you know, how, how I try to try to lead and the connection that I make with the players and, you know, ultimately you're only defined by one thing and that's whether you win or not. So it, short answer is that it wasn't, you know, wasn't good enough. Henry centric on offense during your, your time, Mike, and, and been a lot of success. Going forward, do you, do you still envision that being kind of the, the main theme, or, or you know, do you see it veering off at all? Uh, um, in the future? You know, we'll, we'll have to see where things go in the off season and see where we think is best for the football team and the, the, the identity of the football team and you know, where everybody is and and what those plans are. So, the, I I can't really answer things that are a few months away in, in the direction, but you know, confident that we'll, we're, we're, we're going to be um, aligned, you know, that the organization starts with alignment from, from Amy, you know, to, you know, with myself, the general manager, the coaching staff, the players, you know, that, that, that's what's important in the off season is making sure that those things are in place. Assessing the offensive line, is it more a matter of trying to just revamp and, and get more players in that maybe are healthier and be better there? Or is it a situation where maybe you have to kind of tweak the scheme and, and how you're going about things? You got to protect your quarterback in the National Football League. When you don't, what happens? Well, they get hurt and they, th they turn the ball over. So. We, we need to find guys that can protect uh, the quarterback um, just because that's, that's what happens. He showed up, you know, throughout the season and, you know, kept some guys in and chip and all this other stuff. And, you know, we'll just have to, you know, keep searching for them and keep finding them and keep working with them. And pass defense have to do with the fact that teams just stopped trying to run the ball against you, and how much of it well, is that there you was some good volume there. Yeah. yeah, I think that um, you know can't be first and run and last and pass. I mean, we it goes hand in hand. We got to find you know ways to to rush the quarterback and impact the quarterback. Um, that's that's the that's the best coverage, you know, is being able to rush them. Um, yeah, you know, and then that'll be conversations that I'll have, you know, with Shane, the coaching staff is, you know, but it starts there and then it starts to, you know, materialize into, you know, the coverage and zone and man. And, but that's something that we have to, you know, we certainly have to improve on. Mike, when you're assessing the coaching staff here, how much of it is based on practice, teaching, development, and how much of it is game execution? Yeah, I think that there's, uh, you know, you got to teach, you got to develop, and you have to inspire the player. And I think, you know, the play callers, you know, ha have to be, um, you know, efficient and, and be in rhythm and understand what, what we're trying to do as a team um, that we want, you know, to ex execute the game plan and what, it, what I feel like is the, is the best way to, to win that particular game. You brought up the pass rush. Why do you think the production did end up dropping the second half of the season? I mean, we talked about, you know, Danico's, you know, the, the time that he was out, you know. So Harold wasn't out there for the, the whole year. There was some production there. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's the easiest way to cover, you know, is to speed up the quarterback's clock and, you know, did some of that, you know, at times, but just not consistent enough on, you know, first Jacksonville game or you know, some of those games. You mentioned Harold. I mean, I, we hadn't seen him since August. How's his recovery gone? And you expect him okay. to be ready? Yeah, I mean, it's great to see him around. You know, he looks good. Um, you know, I mean, he's made Nashville his home. It's great to see him, you know, him and Danielle and the kids. And so hopefully, you know, he'll have, uh, you know, be, you know, be ready to go and have a full recovery. and you know, get back to, to playing the way he was before he got injured. Mike, you mentioned being pleased with what you saw from Dobbs. What would you like to see from Malik uh, going into next year? What would you like to see him work on this offseason uh, for, for next year? Yeah, I think I answered that question. Somebody, Jim asked me five minutes ago. Okay, cool. I what, 
Fourth quarter issues, uh, 37 points. Jim, you share the uh, quotes with him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jim. I didn't hear anything. I apologize. <laughs> 37 points combined for the fourth quarter in 17 games. Uh, for a team that has prided itself on finishing, how disappointing was that number, maybe? Losing is disappointing, Teresa. Losing is disappointing. So if we had scored 18 in the fourth quarter and been able to win because we had the ball and we finished with it in our hands like we did against Indianapolis twice. Um, you know, but we never, never won a game when when we had the ball in our hands and needed to score. We missed a kick opening week of the season, uh, you know, and then never scored in those one-score games. Coach, Ryan talked about last year how long it took for him to move on from the Bengals' loss, the playoff game. For you, trying to move on from this season, how long do you give that? Or do you, as a head coach, do you not have time? <laughs> well, I mean, I think you're always trying. You know, I mean, I think it's hard to move on, you know, completely because you're always thinking about, you know, things that happen and trying to use that as a, you know, a, a, a learning, you know, where to learn, the preparation, what you did, you know, what you didn't do, what worked, what didn't work. Um, but it's, I mean, it's part of the process of, of dealing with, you know, kind of where we're at. And, uh, you know, we'll have to turn the page and, you know, move forward. What do you want to see the identity of this team be going forward? The same thing that you know I've always wanted it to be. I want it to be smart and tough, fast, you know, physical. I still think that there's a, you know, there's a degree of physicality that's required in this game at at, at every level. Um, you know, fundamentally sound, play with technique. You know, but you know we got to get faster. We have to be a faster football team. We're not. Rarely are we the fastest team out there. What are your thoughts on analytics, whereas, like, how involved that is in your process? Yeah, help me out. Which, which analytics are you referring to? And I'll, and I'll work your way through everything that we injuries, do. For injuries, game planning. Okay, so injuries, what would you want to do there? We're using the analytics to track the GPS. Right, that's, that's, what, I, I, yep. I wanna, that's what I'm asking. What are your thoughts? Like, where are you guys with the, the involvement with, with injuries, but then also game planning? Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, we track the speed every practice. They have it on their iPad, and they go around and they say, hey, I'd like to get you to 90%. That's how we track that throughout the week as it relates to injuries. We get a report uh, the next day from the game about it's got speed, uh, max, max, uh, max speed. It's got distance traveled at uh, those max speeds, you know, anything over 15 miles an hour. So you've got that list. You know, the one thing that I would be curious in is acceleration, you know, as it looks, as it tracks from injury, you know. Um, yeah, we can get you up to 90%, but does it track, you know, zero to, uh, you know, 15 over 15 yards? You know, I mean, how quick is a guy, you know, accelerating? And how can we use that to help him, you know, recover from injury, what the baseline is? You know, there's they they mark accelerations like, hey, he accelerated this many times in a game, but does it have that number of what that speed is, or excuse me, what that acceleration is, that speed, you know, over a level of time? Um, as far as game planning, uh, the GPS, I mean, what do you want? Throw deep to the fast guys, or that that's what I would do. I would the guys that are fast try to throw deep to them, and the guys that aren't, they probably should be underneath. Running routes. I was talking more on like how you look at probability on, on X play in this situation, fourth down, going for fourth down. Oh yeah, those yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so then, so then that leads to um, game management. Uh, Stretch and I, you know, track those, um, what we feel like uh, is best in the situation. You know, whether to 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 go for it or try to, you know, kick or attempt something. You know, we, those, those come into account, absolutely. You know, we're trying to track those and see what's best. And then, then you try to get a feel for the game and you kind of how the game's going. Is it low scoring game? How, how are they playing? How are our defense is playing? You know, how many points we think we're going to need to win? Mike, you factor in discipline into your decision about whether or not you're going to retain Todd after the DUI? 
Um, I mean, I think our behavior and our actions outside of here are critical, whether that's, you know, mine, the coaches, the players. I mean, I think that that's, that's something that's extremely important uh, and critical in how we carry ourselves outside of here. Um, you know, but we'll have those conversations and I'll have meetings with coaches and we'll go from there. Help Traylon, do you think, Mike? And do you have any advice for, for him as he heads off? Well, it's just to, um, you know, understand that it's not a six month deal. It's it's a year round, and he's not taking any trips to go see other teams. And you know, I think he realizes what, you know, what he can do if he, if he's in shape and he's ready to go and he's big and you know healthy. And he, you know, he worked his tail off. He had some you know, unfortunate injuries. He hurt the toe. You know, had the concussion. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to work with him. I'm excited for him and his future. Um, you know, I just, it probably got off to a slow start and, uh, you know, that's how you learn sometimes is by going through it. Is that the position receiver where you feel like you've got to, when you talk about speed, where you've got to get. No, you want a fastest roster that you can. You know what I mean? You want to, you want a fast, um, everybody. You want your D lineman to be able to run. You want your corners to be able to run, receivers. You know, I mean, we're just trying to I – mean, it's a fast game, uh, you know, and so that's, that's, that's what you're trying to do all the time, just find as fast players that can play football as possible.